Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the Alif podcast. Today I have uh, one of my own personal um, childhood musical heroes, Mr. Hamza Jafri from the band Coven and many other things which we'll get into. Um very excited to have him here. How are you Hamza? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thanks for coming and uh and uh you know it's just uh, an honor to have you here. Um uh, I've been very like inspired by the things that you've done over the years especially with Coven. Um so I guess I just wanted to start first with you know how did you get into music and was it you know something that was apparent as a, early on as a child or as a teenager or something that you grew into over over time well there was uh there was a lot of music around my mom used to listen to a lot of music uh mainly mainly like uh black and white bollywood you know film music on the radio mm-hmm. and she'd be watching like old movies old bollywood movies so that i'd get to hear the soundtrack to that stuff yeah so that's like my earliest memories of of listening to music you know and um then later on it would be uh qawali my mm-hmm. dad would listen to a lot of qawali sabri brothers mm-hmm. he was a big fan so like after he'd come back from work he'd um he'd sit in the lounge and he'd have a big quite a massive music system and uspe he play sabri brothers ki live acha acha right mm. and that would be like a proper listening session yeah. he would sit and like would that be on vinyl it. or on tape or? i'm guessing it must have been on vinyl i guess mm. you have to tape your vinyl mm. i can't recall yeah but uh how huh, you used to sit and listen to that and uh so a lot of that has gone in yeah <laughs> a lot yeah. of the sabri brothers and there was other this other guy aziz mia yeah uh aziz mia kawal so this we i remember listening to him a lot mm. and um and then uske alawa the only other music was was boni m yeah. that would play at like <laughs> daddy cool <laughs> uh, that would play at like birthday parties and stuff you know yeah so that's what i remember like listening to as a kid yeah and um at that point i'm i'm not sure if i was sort of uh if i had decided ke i like this stuff it was just stuff that used to happen yeah around me you know yeah so it would be a chatti ke this is good so i think mm. there was a lot of that going into my uh well thoughts and my whole system yeah and uh then later on i guess when i was probably like 6 7 8 years old i remember listening to the memory that i have is listening to uh, to bon jovi on the radio okay right yeah. and listening to distorted guitar yeah and i didn't know what it was at the time because i didn't used to play it. <laughs> so i remember listening listening to this the sound which was like distorted yeah and i was like what is that you know you yeah. can and i was i remember being like so mesmerized by it mm. you know and all i wanted to do was just like listen to it on repeat and i think my brother my older brother uh he he had bought the the tape for mm. i think it was that the slippery when wet tha ya you know yeah one of the albums and then we used to listen to it in the car while going to school and you know what mm. not to wo bahut sunte the and that's how i sort of figured out that the guitar is a thing yeah yeah <laughs> you know? so did your brother pick up uh, an instrument before you did uh no we picked up the guitar together okay and what was your age gap uh, so um my brother is uh i think about 5 about 6 years older to me okay and um this story that i'm telling you about like listen uh, listening to bon jovi on the radio is when we used to live in spain it's probably 1986 you lived in spain 87 yeah ha uh-huh. acha i was born in london uh huh and then lived there for a few years and then from there we moved to uh a couple of african countries my dad was in uh, bcci ah uh-huh. and so we traveled i think we lived in kenya for a bit in botswana in swaziland in zimbabwe we traveled a lot wow. throughout africa yeah so the the boniem and kabali days was when we were living in africa mm. 
and then from there we moved to uh, to Madrid, and that's where I have the memory of listening to like rock, you know, this eighties rock. Yeah. And uh, once then it was like okay, you know, the guitar is a thing, and I remember going to the store and seeing uh, lots and lots of like guitars on the walls yeah. and things. Yeah. And even my parents would ask me, you know, okay, do you want to learn? Do you want to get one of these? Mm. And I think I was just too young at the time to understand, you know, yeah. kya hai. And uh, from I'd say from there we then shifted to Pakistan mm-hmm. after Spain. We shifted to uh, to Lahore. Mm-hmm. How old were you then? I was ten okay. when we came came to Lahore. Other then uh, we started getting more into music. Started listening to Guns and Roses, you know. And uh, I think once we started hearing Guns and Roses, I think my brother and I had decided, okay, uh, we we need to learn. We need we want to you know figure music out and play it's and stuff. funny like so, so much of the sounds familiar because <laughs> I've lived in the UK and in Af- and in Kenya mm. as well right. and Guns N' Roses is what made me right. pick up guitar <laughs> so yeah so I remember on one of our trips to Karachi because a lot of our family used to live here in Karachi so uh, I think it was my 13th birthday mm. and my I had I was asking dad to get me a guitar and he went out and one evening and brought back an acoustic guitar and so he must have got it from somewhere here in Karachi Beatles so, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know <laughs> so uh, huh? and then it was this amazing thing it was like oh my god this is a guitar yeah. and I just remember being so happy my brother and I were both like over the moon and then we yeah. traveled back to Lahore and then we started looking for coffee or something. We just like, you know, experimented on it. And, yeah. and at a point I thought where we like, we're going to need some guidance, you know, so yeah. let's, you know, look for someone. Mm. There, there weren't any music schools, mm. no academies, nothing. Mm. There was like nothing around. So my dad gave an ad in the paper. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> my, my dad put an advert in the paper saying that... Uh, we're looking for a guitar instructor, Amazing. right? And at that time, must have been 1988, mm-hmm. maybe, huh? 1988 over. And then um, Saeed Iqbal. Okay. He was a guitar player, like a proper pro guitar player at the time. Yeah. Jo bhi, you know, jo rock scene us time pe chal raha tha, 80s ka. Mm. And uh, so he responded to the ad and he said, Ke, you know, yeah, I can, I can teach your kids. Yeah. So then we started taking like uh, lessons uh, once a week at his place. Okay. And we'd go over to his house and, you know, he was like a proper rock dude with like long hair. Yeah. <laughs> proper 80s guy. Yeah. You know, and we'd be so excited. We're like, wow, this guy's a rocker. You know? <laughs> and uh, amazing. And I think we took four lessons. Okay. One lesson a week. Yeah. After the fourth lesson, he was like, eh, you've learned enough. Now you go find your way. Wow, and, that was it. And, <laughs> you know, I have to tell you, like, I, I credit so much of, you know, of whatever yeah. I have been able to do to, to Said Saab because he, he, was, um, he was just a source of inspiration. And it wasn't get chai ye aise uta ye aise uta ye mm. you know ungli rakhni ho ye ye notations hai mm. ye there was none of that it was just us spending time with him mm. and I think there was such strong inspiration that was coming through and I think that that is such a great thing yeah um, you know like when you're looking for a teacher yeah right so you need to have that inspiration coming through bilkul like you know my first uh, guitar teacher was teaching me like yankee doodle and stuff mm. and i just and i was listening to mm. guns and roses and metallica and i was mm. like what is this like mm. i don't want to learn this so i ended up quitting that and mm. didn't pick up a guitar again till a couple of years later so mm. you know it's so important as mm. you say for yeah. the teacher to know where yes. the where yeah. the students coming from yeah you know actually in in any walk of life if you don't have the right teacher, yeah. so that's just gonna just udhari baat jo hai wo mar jayegi. You know? Bilkul. So it's very important that that you get the right uh, 
you get the right teacher for your kid you know yeah for for anyone yeah so from there onwards like when was it then you mm. that you formed your first band or whatever yeah after that like after said saab said that okay now you go find your way i think we were obviously we didn't really understand that mm. we were kind of really sad mm. said uh that you know what we're not going to get any more lessons you yeah. know what are we going to do but we we kept on going and uh we managed to find some friends who were also into the same sort of music and stuff mm. and um uh we we happened to meet a friend of uh, my brother met a friend of his like a class fellow mm. um at this computer store right. where we had gone to buy a game mm-hmm. you know you tape pe milte the games pe like some yeah yeah atari type yeah, yeah. not even atari pre atari it be like tdk ki tape kism ki cheez hoti oh. aur us pe game hota tha acha which would run on a commodore 64 okay. i don't know if you yeah. know, it's like really <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> start yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we were there like going to buy this game and we met like a friend of my brother's uska purana classmate tha mm. and we told him that how you know we play music and he was like really he's like let's jam you know mm. let's meet up and let's jam together or something mm-hmm. so we met he didn't really know how to play anything at the yeah. time but it was just so much the excitement. idea of it was really ah, exciting okay we're going to get i think he had a guitar mm. and um so we just got together and talked and um this is atif said by the way the, okay. the guy that plays with he plays with quadrum nowadays no mm, yeah so atif was uh it was his idea he was like hey, let's make a band mm. and we were like really <laughs> <laughs> the, the making a band idea never entered our minds like it was just get so we just want to figure this thing out yeah you know so he brought that whole idea in and um he he was very sort of socially sort of connected he had, you know Mm. there's a big social group that he was part of mm. and he was like you know we're going to make a band and we're going to play a concert and all our friends are going to come see us play and we're like hey, who's going to come see yeah, us gonna... play <laughs> we're like atip what are you talking about man? <laughs> so we're like we're going to make a band we you're like looking at each other okay we're going to make a band we're going to be in a band and yeah. we're going to play a show and us pe log bhi aayenge it just seemed like outlandish yeah. <laughs> but i mean yeah atif was like he was what a thinker he's like far out yeah nothing scared him you know <laughs> yeah. and uh to we like get a tike you know uh you do what, what what you think you can and yeah we'll, we'll play along <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> and then we met more friends and you know someone kya kehte hain we we didn't have much equipment at the time mm-hmm. because they weren't like us tarah se music stores or you know there wasn't also a way to find musicians like nowadays yeah. like with with the internet and smartphones and whatnot yeah, like yeah, you can yeah. find anything anywhere yeah. but i'm talking about like uh, <laughs> 1989 is, yeah when you know? even like using the house phone was like ah. uh, chupke karte the <laughs> yeah so which really it was like nothing so <laughs> you'd hear from someone ke yaar you know uh mera jo neighbor hai na wo uh, i think wo drums bajata hai because raat ko awaze aati hai <laughs> you know it would be stuff like that yeah, yeah i've heard ke you know yesterday when i went home from school so jo the the house like the fourth house down the street i saw a guy walking in there with mm. something that might have been a guitar <laughs> <laughs> So it's stuff like that. intelligence like you know? was required. So we're like okay okay then we'd be like let's go there. Yeah. Literally. And so we'd end up at someone's house we don't know who lives there. Yeah. Nothing. We'd like yeah. ring the bell and be like ke yahan pe koi guitar bajata hai. <laughs> It would be stuff like that. <laughs> and then you know someone's mom would be like ha beta bajata to hai. Yeah. And then be like you know oh and then the kid would come out and he'd be like hey, yeah I play and we'd be, be like yeah we also play we have a band and be like oh wow. <laughs> and then we'd make friends. Was, what what a time what yeah. simple days. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It seems so alien now. Yeah. Like just thinking about those times, you know. Yeah. So uh a lot of the we met a lot of 
friends like that and we gathered a lot of equipment like that mm. like stuff we didn't have like we didn't have any amp- amplifiers mm. and things so we'd go and find out kiske paas kya hai and go ask them yeah can we borrow your amp mm. can we borrow your drums can yeah. you you know this sort of piece karke then uh, we put this little outfit together and uh, we prepared i think maybe 10 maybe 15 songs or something mm. and the covers f- covers yeah. it was all covers at the yeah. time yeah and we played a small gig at this uh at this restaurant called Salus okay somewhere on the mall road mm-hmm. uh and i think about a hundred of atif's friends showed up that's a uh, <laughs> connected guy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was amazing it was like do you remember what kind of covers you we were doing yeah we did some uh we did a lot of um guns and roses songs we nice. did some I think we did one or two Metallica songs. Mm. Then I think we did uh Ek Aad Bon Jovi ka koi gana kiya tha. Uh-huh. And um like stuff that we were listening to at the time. I can't yeah. remember the exact so what, set what list. So what what how old were you? And we you? had one original song at the time. It so was, you already had an original. Uh, song. we had uh, now that I think of it we had one original song. Yeah. which was called uh Samson and Delilah. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Nice. Yeah, one song. And that was us time with the lineup was um we had Sikandar Mufti on drums. Mhm. And uh Atif was on bass. Mhm. There was Abid Khan on rhythm guitar. I was playing lead guitar mm. and it was Ali Rizvi on vocals. Mm. Okay. And um Ali Rizvi we met through Atif uska class uska purana dost tha and Sikandar bhi we met he was friends with Atif's younger brother okay so he kind of assembled our band so how old were you at this point i was 14 when we played the first gig wow uh, i think usse pehle we might have i think we did like a small performance a couple of months before that mm. at some school carnival mm mm-hmm. I think we played like two songs. Yeah. And um and were there other bands in the school carnival or you don't know? I band? think there was there was already some band playing. Hmm. And I think I wish had ijazat mili thi to go and like play hmm. on their setup. Okay, okay, okay. So I think that was probably that, that was the first time that we played in like a live setting. Hmm. And then the other the Salus thing I'm telling you was like a proper show. Yeah. It was like a Coven concert. Yeah. Where uh Uh, so the I, name Coven was already there. Oh yeah ha huh? there's there's like so much to tell man I mean yeah we we'll get into it yeah you know because it's I mean I've talked about stuff that happened like 30 years ago Okay because so, I'm always been fascinated yeah. with the name so mm. how did the name come about Yeah the name um my elder brother at the time um I think he came up with something that was called Clash in Coven Hmm and um you'll have to ask him I, yeah. i have actually never asked him what what was the thought about. process was ah. <laughs> so wo clash in coven se phir wo uh kam hote phir wo coven aa gaya hmm. and at the time it was um, so it wasn't coven it was coven with the accent of the hmm. o because hmm. we like the sound of the word coven more than the sound of the word coven hmm. and plus coven was uh, it's it's uh, a group of witches yes and coven with the thing is a latin word which uh which at the time my brother did some research and he found mm-hmm. out and he, he said it's it's just a gathering okay so interesting just gathering yeah. so it doesn't doesn't have to do with witches yeah, and yeah. stuff like that so yeah. we're like yeah okay cool it's a gathering <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah. nice so i didn't realize uh-huh. that it existed as far back as you being 14 mm so um, okay i guess then fast forward a little bit like when did it become a more serious thing or was it serious to begin with yeah know? i think um you know we we weren't thinking so much about mm. like the future or yeah. or that this is going to be something that we do or make a living out of or stuff yeah. so it was just exciting for us as kids yeah. you know so itni far thinking nahi for us, us it was just like yeah let's just do the next gig you know yeah. when are we going to jam next you mm. know when are we going to work on a new song next yeah the wo bas udhar udhar tak hi tha sara and it was all about you know like 
improving, like mm. jamming more, getting our coordination going. Yeah. Like myself and uh, Abid, uh, uh, very, very close friends, like mm. Abid Khan and his younger brother, Fahad Khan. These mm. are all pro musicians now. Yeah. Abid and Fahad. Fahad the, Khan the drummer. Fahad Khan the drummer, yeah. yeah. So he's Abid's uh, younger brother. Mm. And Abid was, uh, he was my elder brother's friend and then we got introduced and we became friends. Yeah. So Abid, uh, Fahad at the time wasn't playing anything. Mm. Uh, so he would, uh, but Abid was playing rhythm guitar for Kovan. So him and I used to like jam for hours and hours every mm. day. Mm. Like we'd come back from school and then Yato, I'd go over to his place or he'd cycle over to our house. Mm. And then mm. we'd jam like, like three, four hours straight. Nice. Just like, just jam. That's it. Yeah. And we're just playing music. Yeah. And just the hours that we put into it, you know, yeah. I mean that it obviously makes a difference. It helps and it just, you know, solidifies. Whatever, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the music in you. Yeah. So, and I, I don't think there's any substitute for that. You know? Yeah. So how we used to play a lot and we were really into like doing gigs and things. Mm hmm. And uh, what exciting what they thought that whenever we're going to get a chance to play. And we played lots of, uh, uh, we played some gigs at a house. It was one of Atif's family's uh, houses, like uh -huh. Jahan Pinon was living at the time. Hmm. And uh, we started doing these club type gigs okay. over there. So yeah. we'd play a gig like every weekend over there for a few months. Hmm. And um, a lot of people, like 100, 200 people would show up. It would be a really cool thing. Nice. Cool hangout, live nice. music, be much better. So. Yeah, yeah. So, at, you know, what point did you guys decide that you need to, like, put together an album mm. or some collection of original songs? Yeah, um, it was around, I think, 1996 mm. that uh, we started huh, sort of, thinking okay, okay we we want to make an album we had enough original songs mm. for an album mm. so and at that time we also had uh, newly met Mikal mm -hmm. who uh, had his uh, who's putting up a studio yeah and there was a lot of um, excitement around that yeah. excitement and hype around the fact that you know there's this guy who studied music from abroad and he's come back and he's putting up like a, a really cool studio yeah so um we wanted to record there. We had heard about him, but mm. you know, we didn't have any sort of funding to do mm. that. Mm. And um, we were approached by a producer, a guy who said, "Okay, look, I'll um, I'll fund your album. Mm. We'll go record it at Mikhail's place, and mm. then you know." So he was kind of essentially offering us a record deal, mm. and we were like, "Great, you know, mm. awesome, let's go." Yeah, and. Um, it's, it's quite an extensive story to <laughs> what happened. <laughs> so we went in and we recorded with Mikal uh -huh. and uh, this producer guy was supposed to pay for the whole thing. Yeah. And he just, towards the end, he, he just vanished. Oh, right. Disappeared. Left you with the yeah. recording and the yeah, bills. Yeah, with the big bill. <laughs> 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 and uh, obviously it was a big thing. It was a big dust for Mikal as well, you know, because yeah. he was like, yeah, I spent so much time and this and that. It was like, yeah. It just you know you, we were like probably like the first thing first artist to be recorded at his place mm. so other um we sort of came to an agreement where we would try to raise the money mm. by doing gigs yeah which was a cool thing at the time because you know it pushed us to play more absolutely you know and get more of a following engage more people mm. so i mean at the time you know, the there were. It seemed like a hai, yeah. mm, mm. You know, Sanya, why? But I mean, now that I think about it, it was all part of the, you know, the learning the process. process. Yeah. And these things really helped make what you know what Coven was becoming at the time. Yeah. So then we, huh, actually, that's when we started doing those club style gigs at this abandoned house. Right. Right. You right. know, and. Um, we we even we did like a nirvana tribute um <laughs> at that time yeah and uh, ustai but then a lot of these other lorry bands like dog tag and entity mm -hmm. entity which was which is ep basically. which later became ep yeah uh, 
so all these guys would come and see shows and then we'd invite them to like you know to be like the opening act or, mm. come, or join us as a guest appearance i mm. think the trip also played mm. there trip bhi ek band hota tha lahore ka and that's how the scene sort of you know uh, but well, that's going. how the scene mm. happens right yeah. you do these shows mm-hmm. wherever you get the chance mm-hmm. to do a show and you call your friends yeah and we finally made uh, s- you know some money from there yeah i think we were a little bit short and one of again one of our tips friends was very generous to to pay for whatever was left over mm-hmm. and uh we we went to mikal with the money and we like here yeah, you know yeah and uh, a few months had gone by yeah and mikal had said to us that you know um we can we can do much better than this mm. what we've done yeah So he says that you know mujhe bhi samajh zyada aa gayi hai how this all this works and yeah. he goes ke you guys also sound a lot better now yeah you know with all the live playing and yeah. this and that you that you've been doing so yeah. he was like let's record again yeah and at that point we were like okay um but we don't want to do these songs we have new songs yeah you hadn't put those songs out yet no no okay. <laughs> so i mean cuz you know the band was evolving we yeah. were evolving and we had new ideas so we had yeah. new songs and we were like yeah we want to record these ones mm. and that's how the the not in your world album came to be okay so then we um recorded uh the started recording the not in your world album nice so at what point did ali noor come into the equation because i remember when i mm. when noor you started becoming popular i had heard ke he Done mm-hmm. some stuff with another band called Coven, and that's mm-hmm. probably where I first heard of Coven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the uh, at the time Ali Rizvi was our singer, mm-hmm. and he'd live in America, and um, he would visit few months in the year, and we'd schedule our gigs and whatever recordings we were doing, you know, during those during his period yeah. of yeah. visits. So he since he wasn't part of the composition process, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um the songs were a little sort of alien to him and um when he came down he went straight into the recording studio. Right. And we were like it's this is the song and this is how the vocal melody is is on there. Yeah. I would always record like guide vocals. Right. You know. So I'd have guide vocals and this and that and I'd be, you know, directing ke bhi is tarah isko karna and I think because he wasn't part of the whole, you know, mm. making the songs process though so, something wasn't gelling and yeah. we all felt it and he also felt it and he was like yeah this you know it doesn't seem to be sitting right yeah then we tried uh, um a friend of ours kashif sadik we tried getting him to sing on the songs um he was sort of more in tune with what we were doing because he he'd be hanging around us a lot mm. during the time and um kash kashif had a very distinct style very distinct tone mm. of singing and um he sang on the stuff and he, he did a great job but again it just didn't feel like it was totally sitting on yeah the songs yeah and uh, at that point ali rizvi had suggested that we go uh, meet his cousin mm. ali noor mm. and he's like hey, you know my kid cousin he sings why don't you go check him out okay so, but what i find interesting is mm. you were doing guide vocals but you mm. didn't decide that you mm. should sing on it yeah and whose I, decision was that I think it was my own because I I mean I'd have the because I was composing the songs mm. I'd always have like ideas for the melodies and this and that mm. but I didn't feel the confidence in my voice at the time I felt ke you know um I know it just didn't enter my mind that I could be the singer for this outfit right you know I think it was just quite uh ek bas tha there was this position that was allotted to us that he's the lead guitarist He yeah, the drummer, he's the bassist and he's We the, need a vocalist. <laughs> so, ha, so we need a vocalist. You know, to us time That's pe, interesting. Ha, mm. so that thought never opened up, you know. Mm. So so then we went and met Ali Noor. Ali mm. Noor had a really awesome voice. Yeah. You know, he had lots of like range and he could scream and he could sing low and mm. high and like different falsetto and this mm. and that. And we're like, "Wow, you know, this guy has a system." Yeah. So um we got him and tried him on 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 the recordings he yeah. sang and that too the first time he came in the first session didn't work out so well yeah. mm. and then uh then that's when we realized ke yaar 
we can't just get any singer in the studio and have him sing on top of the songs. Yeah. We need to spend some time, do some live jams. Yeah. You know, play the songs live with the singer. Yeah. Like, you know, sort of get him totally into the, the Gel feel into of the things. Outfit, yeah. yeah. That's when we, I mean, I we spoke to Mikhail and said, "Yeah, we're gonna like take a couple of months off." Yeah. And um, then I would go and sit with Ali Noor and like with an acoustic guitar, get him like sing the songs. There was a lot of vocal sessions happening mm. like that. Mm. Uh, a lot of jams and vocal sessions. I think a couple of months we rehearsed the tunes like that, mm. got in the sing and um, like totally like feel the music, and mm. then we went back in to record. Right. And that's what you hear on the Not In Your World recording. Him going in for the second time after right. like a uh, couple of months of right. you know, rehearsing and like yeah. daily jams and whatnot. Yeah. That's when we got that record and we were all very happy uh, with the what, what we had made. So yeah. musically speaking, um, at the time, were you guys tracking as a live band or were things being done separately? Hmm. So the the guitar hmm. and drums would be done together. Hmm. So we'd have like the drums in a booth and the guitar in a booth and we'd yeah. be wearing headphones and we recorded. Yeah. So all the songs we we did like that. We didn't use a click track. Yeah, so, that was going to be my next question because uh, it doesn't, doesn't sound like it. Hmm. Yeah. We, I mean, the idea of using a click track even like today, even now it's alien. <laughs> it, I, it doesn't uh, yeah. appeal to me. Yeah. I, I just feel that, you know, it doesn't let the music breathe and stuff like that. Yeah, so I, I agree. I actually. don't enjoy using yeah. it. So um, we had Sikandar in, in a booth and I was, mm. and we used, I think, like a stack like this, one mm-hmm. of the marshals like this. Yeah. And uh, we just like mic'd it up and played. And I played um, a PRS on the on Mikhail's PRS, Mikhail's PRS. Okay. on the Not New World album yeah because we figured Kivsky tone were a, you know obviously the pickups and the guitar itself was great to the yeah. sound of all the chiari mm. so guitar drums together then we added bass on top mm-hmm. and then vocals on top and then whatever rhythm guitar and vocals we didn't talk about when Samir entered the picture so was ah. he already was he the bassist at that time no, my elder brother. So the, the the lineup for Not New World was Sikandar Mufti on drums, uh, Muhammad Ali Jaftri, my elder brother on bass, mm. Abid Khan on rhythm guitar, mm. myself on rhythm and lead guitar, and Ali Noor on vocals. So um, did Abid also do his guitars with the drums or was that an overdub as well? No, uh, rhythm guitar, Abid's uh, stuff was done after. The okay. only thing that happened together live was, was the you. drums and my takes. Cool. And Makes sense actually because hmm. you're composing, you know, hmm. so driving uh, so, the feel and the yeah. the tempo of things. Yeah, and the structure also, you know. Yeah. structurally chale or Yeah. And actually, even till this day, we've kind of done it like that. A lot mm-hmm. of the new co- new COVID recordings also mm-hmm. happen with guitar. Up to we do it, we've been doing like the three together: right. guitar, bass, and drums. Ham look saati. Yeah. Uske baad we started doing. Yeah. yeah. You know. We obviously would it turn into a trio, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, so the not new world thing happened, and uh, we were quite happy with the results. And you know, we we went and released it through Offbeat, mm-hmm. this store, yeah, this music store Offbeat. at the time. Yeah. And uh, it made sense to us because they had branches in Lahore, Karachi, Islamabad, even Sialkot and Faisalabad. So mm-hmm. we were like, yeah, okay, this can be like a nationwide release. You know? <laughs> yeah. So we went with the master and and uh, we just let them put Handled. it out and yeah. just sell it. Yeah. There was no like, okay, percentage sharing type, nothing. It was yeah. just like, just please have our record and just sell it. So did you make any money? Nothing. We never spoke we about money, never went to them. And um, I mean, you know, we're kids at that time. Right. It, just, it just didn't occur to us, yeah. you know. Even though that was a time where you mm. could make money selling music. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, we could have had our own, we could have sold tapes at, at our gigs and stuff. Yeah. It just didn't occur to us at that time. Mm. You know? For us, it was more about, man, just, hey, listen to our song, you know, yeah. hey, or, or Go if we had it. the chance, we'd give people the, the tapes, you know, okay, yeah. yeah, please just listen to our music. That's yeah. all we wanted yeah. at the time. Yeah. 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 Just listen to music, you know, uh-huh. come to our gigs and uh-huh. that was it, you know. And so, did, was this is, I mean, already we're talking about the MTV era and mm. music videos on cable TV and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, although I don't think Pakistani music channels weren't 
up at that time not at this time this is 1997 right jab ha uh, not so was, the was there any video made for any of that stuff at that time no so when was the first music video that you guys did was that selling fast no a uh, third world celebrity was the first ah, music video mm. yeah so um i said what happened after the not new world recording <laughs> Yeah. is is that um would they say um we had gotten such a good reception for it mm. that um we thought that yeah we need to take this tape abroad right and try to get ourselves like a record, a, a record deal. yeah yeah and um i had a i have a british passport i yeah. have british nationality and so yeah. i could you know i could travel to, show up there, yeah. to the uk yeah. and try my luck and as it happened you know i i was 18 at the time and mm. uh, my family was also talking to me about you know why don't you go abroad and see you know mm. they go what's out there for you you know maybe you want to settle abroad or or what or yeah. what not or just go for a trip and yeah. you see yeah so i thought that was a great opportunity for me to take the music and yes. you know go do something about it yeah so i took the album i uh, sold my guitar that i was playing at the time mm. and um with that you know bought the ticket or no sorry my dad got me the ticket and i used the money for the guitar that i sold for like mm. spending money right and then flew to london no, and what uh, what was the guitar you were playing i was playing a honer okay uh i bought that on one of my trips to germany mm. my dad was um my dad had a uh clothes manufacturing business he was making i think we were making track suits at the time and exporting them to okay to a client in germany mm. and um during that time i had visited the yeah. client yeah yeah and um on that visit actually i got to see alison chains live <laughs> oh crazy. wow uh, this is like when lane was still alive yeah yeah, yeah. oh man it was the jar of flies ka tour tha oh my and, god and um, and man uh, i'm so lucky because alice in chains was my favorite band at that time you know and not many yeah. people were into alice yeah, at that time yeah they they were not they were under the radar uh-huh. compared to pearl jam yeah. and nirvana and you know they also sounded really kind of weird and dark, <laughs> dark. and you know they weren't they didn't really have a commercial sound yeah you know just a pearl jam ka tha yeah you know guns yeah even mm. nirvana yeah you know so alice was a little you know koi koi logo ko pasand aata tha yeah but i i used to love that music and i, I remember i landed in germany and i saw a poster yeah of alice in chains live the down in your hole tour and, uh, and i was like uh, the people i was staying with i was like yeah i need to see this show no matter what happens yeah so what year is this for talking yeah uh, so, i mean because <laughs> to get back to because you because dirt came out that, in 91 i have the i have the ticket yeah whoa i kept it <laughs> it's, it's somewhere in <laughs> uh, so wo maine dekha and uh, that was just like it completely blew my mind that yeah. you know that performance and um and during that trip i also bought the honor the guitar, guitar yeah uh, which i then used for many gigs and stuff and mm-hmm. and which i then sold to to go abroad to be able to go abroad spending, and yeah. you know get spending money for that Once I got to London I approached many record companies like literally right. the phone book the phone book was <laughs> phone book ke andar se record companies and there's like you know like hundreds yeah and I'd sit and just call them up and yeah. say that hi you know hi I've come from Pakistan I have yeah. a rock band and we yeah. have an album yeah and um would you be interested in it should I send it to you or yeah. what and a lot of people would be like oh we we do this kind of music you know like yeah, we do kind of they were boxed into their things ha we would genre scout that some mm. people would be like oh we don't deal with rock music mm. yeah so some people would be like yeah okay you know send it to us mm. so uh, i had i think maybe 50 copies with me yeah tdk tapes yeah and i'd be like putting them in you know envelopes and like first class mail them, <laughs> yeah posting them out to these companies and you know it was just it's such a weird time yeah yeah <laughs> and as all this was happening my sister called me one day and she said ke yaar there's a, a friend of mine my classmate mm. she says that her 
her uh, her khala's friend or something is playing is playing for robert plant okay and i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> She, she's like ke wo baja rahi hai wo uska koi solo wo, matlab she yeah. she works with him or sings for him or something yeah. so why don't you send her the tape yeah so i'm like okay you know give yeah. me her number yeah so i think her name was najma akhtar okay and she was doing backing vocals for uh, robert plant ka koi tour chal raha tha usme solo project tha. solo project chal raha tha yeah. and, and she was singing backing vocals for him oh wow and uh, Imagine that man that's, that's like, insane yeah. <laughs> and ha ab uski uski kya kehte hain koi khala ki do uski beti was in this was like my sister's classmate you know yeah so i i called her up and i said ke hi i'm you know with reference you know of that uh, my sister's friend and this and that then she's like okay interesting she said okay send me the tape hmm maine usko dala envelope mein maine bhej diya usko and then like you know forgot about it like uh, i think two weeks down the line i get a call from najma akhtar and she's like hey, listen i i i gave the tape to robert rosenberg and uh, he's the you know he's the producer for okay for for this <laughs> for robert yeah. yeah and uh, he really liked it and he's he's saying that he wants to meet the band yeah and i'm like ah uh, okay the band's not here I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. She's like, okay. She's like, um, take his number and call no. him up and explain no. yeah, it yeah. to him. Yeah. So I called him up, and the name of the record company was Trinifold. Okay. Um, and I called him up, and I and he said, "Kya, I've I've heard the record, and you know, it's really." It's, he 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 was a lot of praise for it hmm. and for him it was quite shocking that it was a band from, from pakistan, pakistan yeah. you know a bunch of teenagers yeah. so he had trouble wrapping his head around it ki hmm. ye you know ki ye kya scene hai ki yeah. weird sa scene hai yeah. and then he was like look i i need to meet you guys yeah. so i can see what it is yeah. he's like i like the music and i'm interested so then i i called called up the band and everyone yeah. everyone was like over the moon ke yaar ye ye kya scene hai this is yeah. crazy you know <laughs> ye to chakka lag gaya you know ke ye kya ho gaya and uh, then i remember speaking to ali noor about it and his parents and ali noor was kind of unsure at the time because he was just about to go into law college right and his parents were like ke yaar we're not sure if he wants to pursue music if we want our kid to pursue music <laughs> as a career yeah and i'm like listen i don't think you guys understand this yeah, is like yeah. a once in a lifetime yeah. opportunity yeah you know this this stuff doesn't happen yeah. <laughs> every day yeah so um there was a lot of back and forth right. and uh it didn't work out yeah basically alinu and his family decided that alinu wasn't going to do music and he was going to start it off the irony of that wow that he wasn't good <laughs> yeah and then i was just like obviously just left there not knowing what to do mm. and what am i going to say to mr robert rosenberg <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so then i called him up and i told him kya um we we don't have the same singer anymore but you know i can find someone and yeah uh audition people here and and you know maybe we can uh uh re-record the vocals and yeah. and the guy obviously he he was like hey man i don't know if you can get your band together if you guys can be here and yeah. play for me and i can come and see you to then sure we can work something out yeah okay i'm busy i got to go yeah so that was that that <laughs> for the yeah. full stop to the whole such thing yeah and um i think from there onwards i kind of started thinking about okay i think i want to sing it needs to be in my control also you ah. know <laughs> <laughs> ah, because that was i mean it was a it was quite a quite a blow you know yeah, at that time i mean how i mean for for like a young kid like a teen i was a, only 18 yeah. and i did understand what it meant yeah to be to get like a record company interested in your music because because you'd always hear that 
that was like the hardest thing it was yeah. you know it was like like winning the lottery you know if someone got a deal or got mm. signed or something like mm. that so ha huh, i was i remember being like really really upset mm. and being depressed like anything mm. and it's during that time of depression and like darkness that mm. i met sabir and um i remember um him telling me ke yaar uh, i want to play for you yeah and i want to play in coven mm. because us time and then i started thinking about rearranging the band and like right. having a band in london or mm. you know like what what i could do how i could you know change things around and you know make it work basically yeah make it work again right? yeah yeah so ha so you asked me about sami so that was the time that i met him and mm. he, he was playing guitar for dog tag mm-hmm. and um i didn't know that uska bass me go interested so it came as a surprise to me that he wanted to play bass specifically mm-hmm. so i'm not sure if i took it very seriously at the time but he told me and we were good friends that so kind of registered and it was mm. like okay so mm. this is one thing you know mm. uh we have a chemistry we played before so that's when i started thinking about having him as part of as part of the unit yeah as so in between um i when i told the rep, the record exec that you mm. know we can get another singer and what not mm. i had already uh given an ad in the classified paper looking for a vocalist right you know because i didn't want to waste any time yeah 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 so I put an ad in the paper and um i started getting calls and i started auditioning singers mm mm-hmm. and that's the time where this is in the uk or this is in the uk okay because i thought that you know now that i've gotten through to this guy mm. i have a contact mm. so maybe i can put together another unit here record some songs and approach him again yeah you know with yeah. some fresh music yeah and have a band over here yeah so with that i went ahead with that i met you know some really cool artists mm-hmm. that's a whole other story you know like uh i met like such amazing uh people and out of one of those i met this i met a singer called Craig uh, David Winnie mm-hmm. who uh, we we got together and then started composing songs mm. and then i flew with him to lahore to mikals mm. and um we put down five tracks okay at mikal studio yeah and then we flew back and when the production was done and then i shared that with uh, with trini fold okay so you did all that yeah mm. and uh, i'll i'll share the 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 songs with you i don't think i have a <laughs> i would love to hear that yeah, yeah. so, so I, you didn't release those uh no no i shared the songs with him he yeah. heard them and um i couldn't get him on the phone again yeah after many months i got a letter from them Mm. saying that thank you for the new music that you sent us it's mm. not currently something that we're looking for mm-hmm. and we should best of luck and keep in touch and keep sending us stuff so i was like acha theek hai that is not happening yeah and then that project kind of just fizzled out right. so they say i mean because i i i was kind of in that zone of trying to make up for something you know yeah the so, yeah. i realized ki yaar it's not really um that you know what what was coming through with the covid stuff isn't yeah. coming through with this right. even though i mean they they great songs they're fun songs mm. but wo jo ek um, that thing that would was cap you know it was grabbing me with covid i could feel ke ha ye abhi puri tarah se pakka nahi hai you know mm. this needs many years and time so invested so actually that brings me to an interesting thing like what was your driving force behind the writing of coven like hmm. what was it that you were trying to get across or portray or was it just coming out of you at that time naturally yeah um i've always been very intrigued by uh by religion hmm. and um a lot of the the writing on there is has to do with um like religious beliefs and con- conflict of thought and yeah. you know in the cultural context hmm. so a lot a lot of that and you know when when you're you're a young teenager so i'm sure like people go through it you know like you yeah. you want to understand things more or you're 
just intrigued by stuff you know Bilkul. so you're searching for answers absolutely so it was my way of searching for answers so i'd write a lot about that there was also um a lot of the songs have to do about like the the this complete disbalance in the world and in society with like you know the, the how, haves and have nots yeah you know there's yeah. like such extreme poverty and then wealth and this so i think growing up that that was affecting me quite a lot so i yeah it was coming out my in my lyrics mm. a lot and um even ha even the not in your world record uh most of it has got that stuff in there mm. and then um then later on volume 1 2 and 3 is pretty much all of it has to do with like the political situation the you know the issues in society mm. and like just one's own conflict and yeah yeah i mean the, the song that um really pulled me in um mm. and then i went backwards mm. was ready to die because mm. i the video the and mm. you know it was in front of you but more than that i felt very strong because when i was uh 16 years old i was living in nairobi mm-hmm. and that's when 911 happened mm-hmm. and like i the difference between pre 911 living mm-hmm. and post 911 because i was going to an american school in nairobi mm-hmm. so literally like it happened and the next day i got like racially profiled basically mm-hmm. by my own teachers you know they were mm-hmm. like i was in Engl- english class and um my teacher was like this american of desi descent but like indian basically but american mm-hmm. and he's like why did your people do this like mm-hmm. not my people what are you talking about like you know even even then i knew that there's something really off about the narrative being put forward in the wake of mm-hmm. whatever happened so it already was like mm-hmm. you know i don't know much but i know my people could not have done this because i at that time I wasn't a practicing muslim i was a 16 year old i believed in god mm-hmm. um i had you know read the quran a bit with molvi sahab you know. so i knew that okay, there's something about this that i agree with mm-hmm. but i hadn't gone deep enough into it um but i knew that okay, at least from what i had read and what was taught to me and my mother kept telling me stories about profit and stuff like that so mm. so that you know hamare log aisa kaam nahi kar sakte like from a islamic standpoint it was not correct to kill people mm-hmm. right so just for that to be kind of thrown upon me that your people did this and you guys are there's something wrong with you guys mm-hmm. um so i started thinking about this a lot and then i started experiencing that kind of profiling every time I would go to the states as I got older um and feeling that racism even if it wasn't overt you could feel it you know mm-hmm. um and so when at the same time I was learning to play guitar and starting to write songs going into bands and stuff so for me it was really kind of there was a void that you know there's no pakistani bands that are taking on this topic like there's nuri happening there's ep happening there's whatever but there isn't anyone that's like talking about this mm-hmm. war on terror situation and then this song came out of this mm-hmm. video and i was like that's it you know that's that's the attitude that's the angst that's the mm-hmm. narrative that needs to be coming out from our mm-hmm. part of the world mm-hmm. um and then i went backwards and i could feel a lot of similar Teams mm-hmm. obviously before nine eleven, you guys were already doing mm-hmm. stuff. But yeah, I I I felt strongly about that. But then I also <clears throat> felt um, that somehow, and at the same time, the Coke Studio and all this stuff started happening, and and it just felt really um, disingenuous. Like, एक तरफ ये सब हो रहा है, war on terror हो रहा है, लोग मारे जा रहे हैं, you know, but you're on tv doing covers of stuff that is generations past but govan was a band which i felt was tackling that and mm-hmm. you know so i mean how what was what's your perspective on that yeah i think um 
you know people people play music uh, to express what they're feeling exactly a lot of the times people don't know what they're feeling mm. you know so if they're if you know during that time during the that whole 911 time if there were artists who weren't sort of you know bringing awareness to the political situation at the time yeah i can kind of understand them as well in terms of ke it was a time of mass confusion yeah you know confusion and just uh, hysteria and um i think uh, it you really needed to know how you felt about something you know you need to have spent time on the issues with yourself uh, you know you, you you need to you need to know how how what it what it is that you feel and how mm. you react to things to be mm. able to then translate that into art yeah right yeah so and i think um for coven we had always been sort of a little bit in tune with mm. you know what's happening in the world mm. and putting that through our music and uh so you're sort of always on the lookout for stuff you know because mm. that's how you view the world yeah you know you view the world like this ke yaar there's you know disparity hai balance hai yeah wo to then when stuff happens so you're tu- in tune with it and then it becomes like your artistic flow yeah you know so i mean naturally i mean everyone was affected by it you know yeah. we were affected by it too and um yeah i mean i can imagine at the time mm. you know touring opportunities mm. or stuff like that would have evaporated mm. in the wake of what was going on we actually never tried to tour abroad. <laughs> yeah yeah you know for um but what might have been you know as ha uh, huh. ha uh, i i i guess i guess you know we what i'll tell you how the song came into being mm. is that um there was so much of it on the tv on the radio on yeah. newspapers you know every day there was stuff yeah. and i remember looking at uh, a news story one day and um i started circling words mm. like keywords like you know militant president yeah. you know uh chopper enemy yeah. you know regiment this that just cir- <laughs> ah that i just circled a whole bunch of these words together and then i took a piece of paper and i wrote them all down yeah and then i started placing them and then this piece of poetry emerged which yeah. was like a story yeah so it was kind of like a edit of the new story it's just you know? exactly how it feels also yeah. it's yeah. it's really it's <laughs> it's just hits all yeah. the right notes you know and i had actually gotten practice cuz i was um during that time i was also working for a news channel mm. and i was editing for them mm. so it was kind of like a you know what i had learned at the yeah. news channel what to do with like all this data that comes in and yeah. then you you know edit and piece it together and make a story out of it yeah so i think i kind of used that skill that i had learned there into editing the story and making it into a song yeah and there's a bit of humor uh-huh. in it too like so the militants have multiplied yeah. you know? ha ha this bit of theater in there yeah. like, uh, excuse me <laughs> the, 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 yeah ha yeah. uh-huh. glad you got on to that yeah yeah so really dark uh-huh. humor but it is it's it's, it's what it is and uh I'm glad that you've caught on to the fact that it's also it's uh it's not just one person talking. Yeah. The song is like a lot of different voices happening. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's uh it's sort of like scenery jahan pe aapki har koi jo hai usme bol raha hai. All the parties involved. Hmm. Isme aapka media bhi hai, phir wo armed forces bhi hain, militants bhi hain, public bhi hai. Yeah. So it's kind of all of that happening. You know? Yeah. And um yeah and you know people related to that song naturally because everyone was feeling it mm. you know and i think for an artist it's a it's it's quite a moment for them to be able to to capture you know that moment into art yeah right? i mean Something i want to ask you about the video in yeah. the sense of like whose idea was it to do the rooftop mm. situation ha huh, we uh, you know all our videos have been done by rola hmm. you know, which is uns mufti ali jafri and uh, wasi hasan hmm. and uh, we uh, we did like the sailing fast video with them 
and it was just like it was kind of like meeting um meeting a different part of of your own group it just felt like yeah yeah these guys an extension of yeah, yeah. That, you know it was just like meeting another part that just fits with you so perfectly mm. Mm. so i mean from that to onwards we've always considered them like, yeah. the rola uh, group as part of coven you know? yeah yeah so um we played them the song and uh they were like this has to be a live performance and yeah. let's go into the city and let's play it mm. in the city you know and just show what's around us yeah. and then i think uh, they were looking for locations and someone came up with this uh, there's a rooftop an arkali market mm. in lahore mm-hmm. and we have access to the building let's just go do it mm. and it was very very quick we just got our stuff and ended up there and and, and like so you video. you look like Mm. you know some force of nature <laughs> in that video <laughs> like was that just what you looked like at that time or would you think i need to look a certain way for that video yeah i you know um not i was very really aff- affected mm. by what was happening yeah around yeah and for me to to have that look was was part of the art that i was trying to put forward bilkul you know it uh, for me I felt ke yaar why are we pushing people away mm. you know so for me it was ke yaar you can still have religious beliefs mm. you can still follow a particular look you can still have a beard you can st- and Bilkul. play music you exactly know, why is Nuts. it that ke if you if you are a religious person yeah and you you have a certain look so then that's all that you're going to do yeah you know why is it like that or people who are liberals that they're not going to you know uh, take an interest in religion in, in religion yeah. and you know in uh, cultural you know ways and beliefs and looks yeah. why why is there this you know the segregation absolutely so yeah. for me that's what i was trying to do i didn't explain it well at the time because i think even i didn't fully understand what i well i don't think it needs you know? to be explained but you carry that energy and i think that's mm. what i really personally because i have mm. similar maybe we fall on different mm. spectrums of our you know level of belief or whatever it is mm. um but mainly as an artist mm. even for me to call a music studio alif mm. is coming from the same thought yeah. ke why can't i be exactly. completely tied into my islamic heritage mm-hmm. and do music right absolutely in a place like this absolutely yeah you know yeah yeah so it was it was like uh, my effort at inclusivity you know yeah <laughs> so, yeah yeah so, so i mean so, so i guess some people got it appreciated it others didn't but i mean that's like with anything you know you put anything out and you know you can have Well, I would say, I would say a lot more people mm-hmm. got it than you might mm-hmm. ever hear about because mm-hmm. you know it's it's just the kind of thing where mm-hmm. you inspire people with something you've done mm-hmm. and then it just plays itself out in in different ways over over a different period of time you know a lot of artists mm-hmm. like you know painters etc they don't get often popular till after they're dead <laughs> you know so i think coven is is like not that you're dead yet but or coven is finished but that it played a part mm-hmm. in setting some things in motion which i think you're still going to see in the future yeah i, I hope so yeah I hope so. but i think with that we'll probably end this part of this conversation we have a lot more to talk about so uh-huh. we'll try to get you in again as soon as possible yeah yeah but uh thanks for being here Pleasure, and sharing it's, some it's of that been, history it's been fun re- yeah. recollecting yeah you know all yeah. these yeah it's, stories it's, yeah yeah and you know there's there's a lot more to come so inshallah cool yeah i look forward to meeting again inshallah yeah. all right thank you and please for some of the newer generations if you haven't heard coven please check out their music we actually re-released um or released for the first time on spotify their their albums volume 1 2 and 3 and as a single chore as well um on a folder records so it's available on all the streaming platforms go and follow them give them a like and share and thanks for watching
Awesome. It was fun. I'm so mad you can't even get a lot of money.